And good afternoon. This is WMGJ's Introspection. And I'm Floyd Donald. And, of course, uh, we have varied guests. And uh, we'd like to wish you a very, very happy holiday uh, from all of us here at WMGJ to all of you, your families and visitors and uh, just people that are coming to gas in this morning. We have a very, very special guest. Guest. Uh, very seldom do we have a guest uh, uh, of this importance in his line of work uh, here, and uh, he's a special person, and he is the Grand Marshal of the Tuscaloosa Avenue Christmas Parade, which is going to be held this Saturday. Uh, I think that's December the 11th. And, of course, I guess I've let the cat out of the sack already. I have in my studio uh, Premier Harmonica blues singer and writer and producer, Jerry Boogie McCain. And I'd like to say good afternoon, Jerry. Good afternoon. And it's always a pleasure to have you here. Uh, I started to, in fact, uh, uh, I wanted to look at uh, some other material, but... This interview is very important, Jerry, um, uh, as we begin to look at this, not just because you're a grand marshal and you deserve that. Usually the grand marshal of a uh, parade is a very special person, a person of notoriety, a person that has made accomplishments, a person that has really done uh, more than the ordinary. And uh, naturally, I know it uh, simply because we were uh, raised a couple of blocks away uh, from each other, and a lot of, lots of good stuff, and a lot of days back there that were quite different from these days uh, today. You know, as we certainly looked at uh, uh, the Christmas season then and the Christmas season now, and of course, in thinking about uh, the music uh, there. You know, uh, uh, as we go along and we listen at various music types and so forth. Uh, people talk about the blues, you know, and uh, in thinking about the blues, uh, there there's a bad concept in some areas about the blues, and some people are, are ashamed of the blues. And uh, of course, uh, when we think about a, a, a blues uh, harmonica player, all right, well, we look at a classic harmonica player. Uh, I remember uh, while I was uh, in in grad school and my saxophone teacher had a Ph.D. in saxophone. And uh, that person knew all the classical styles, fingering and so forth. And I had a a, a Ph.D. in street saxophone. And uh, quite a difference in, in, in our approach to our instruments. But again, I think we both accomplished what we intended to accomplish. Uh, there and of course uh, you've been a student of uh, the harmonica ever since you. Were, let me, how long have you been uh, playing the harmonica? <laughs> Seventy-five years. Ever since you were uh, five years old, you've been uh, playing the harmonica. All right now, and, and and all of these years you've seen various harmonica styles, and you know I, I, when I think of. Little Walter, and then when I think of Lee Oscar with, with Walt. And uh, people, you know, the big argument is, well, who's the best harmonica player? And, of course, that's all you, you ever heard of Jerry McCain. Yeah, we know Jerry. But uh, all harmonica, that little Walter style, and, uh, of course, uh, uh, the concept that the blues are supposed to be uh, less sophisticated, a less sophisticated form of music, but it is a highly reformed uh, style of music. People don't understand that the blues is life. And, of course, uh, uh, when you tell a person, say, well, what a happy blues. I've never heard of happy blues. <laughs> well, how can you be blue and be happy? Well, that's because we have the wrong concept of what blue is. And uh, there it goes. Right. Talk about it a little bit. Tell us about it, just what, what it is. Well, see... To me, the blues is, is cultural. Blues is traditional. Now, there's a lot of people talk about the blues. There's a lot of people play music, and it is a blues. They call it blues simply because they copy it by our style. 
They carve it out of style. You can't, you can't stop a person from playing the blues, but you can talk about it. There was a boy in the, had an article in the paper, in the magazine there. He was a white boy. He said he, he played harmonica, and he said he was going to change the way the blues is played. How big a fool can you get? <laughs> you can't change the culture. You can't change our culture. You see, the blues come from wanting, not having, needing, not getting, out there in that cotton field picking from sun up to sun down, no pay. You, you can't get around that. A lot of people talk about the blues. They don't know what the blues are. They don't know nothing about the blues. And, you know, when we talk about, as musicians, the changes, you know, it's it's simple change, you know, you go uh one, three and four and back to home, you know, you play uh 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 the the verse and then after you play the verse you play the bridge, you know, and uh you just go up a step and modulate a step and you're back in the home key. You know, it doesn't ever get one, three and five in the home key and then you change and you back home. Simple changes, but again, it's so much comes from no simple changes as as musicians you'll find as as jazz musicians improvise they improvise on those same changes uh all forms of uh, as we look at bebop hip hop uh we look at swing we look at boogie we look at uh, what is this r and b uh, all of these have basic blues changes but again it depends on the artist and, of course, the thought pattern in the music. Now, uh, out of all the songs that you've written, and, and just for the record, how many do you think it is? How many songs I've written? Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> well, I tell you, excuse me, I don't know, Floyd, because I was looking on the side of my speakers yesterday, and they got my discography up there. And uh, the guy come there one day, and he said, did you write all these songs? I said, yes, yeah, that's not all of them. So I don't know how many songs. I've written. How many is up there uh, on that discard? Now, how, how many do you have? Uh, I, it was a bunch of them. And, and see, i tell you what I used to do. I was fixing my window one day and taking the sash out and everything, and there was a song punched in a hole in there. that been in there so long that the paper doesn't turn purple. So I got songs everywhere. Did you, uh, do you, you, you don't remember your first song, do you? Yo, the first thing I, oh, yeah. Uh, I'm not uh, talking about first recorded, but just the first song you just did around as a boy. No, no, you know, I'm an old time at all time. I can't remember nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but now, now cut out the foolishness. This is a serious interview. <laughs> uh, I can remember, and you can too, I can remember, you know, down by the Carruthers quarters. People don't know much of you and I can talk a about it. Avenue, we can talk about it. Right there at the corner of Avenue H and Pipe Shop Street, you know, right there, Pipe Shop coming down. But the Carruthers Quarter, do, do you remember years ago, uh, they'd have uh, some blind man down there uh, playing the guitar with a bottle on his uh -huh. uh, finger, and sometimes they might have a harmonica player uh, standing down there on the corner there by the telephone booth playing. You know, you run into the blues in these kind of communities. The Carruthers Quarters was this, uh, I don't have to tell you, was this, Huge house, rooming yeah, house. That was my neighbor. Yeah, that, that was upstairs house. Upstairs and had, a, I, I imagine, eight rooms on each side on each floor. Uh -huh. uh, it, it had to have at least 32 or 35 rooms in this house. And, of course, in the back of it, you know, Arthur Lee Truitt and those people that lived in the back of the Carruthers Quarter. But old man Carruthers, Reverend Carruthers, owned that place. Had one hydrant out in the backyard. <laughs> and uh, you remember... You remember, yeah, that, that's a long time ago, but you yes, still remember that. That's a long that. time. I remember it. Yes, I remember because I remember those blues artists that used to come through there. They used to stand in the street and play. And, and I can imagine uh, what you picked up. Uh, there was a guy, he was tall. He played guitar. And was, uh, they called him, they called him sh sh Shorty. And one was tall. And I used to follow these fellas. they come down the street playing the guitar. And uh, I would follow them, and I, I would play along with them. And then I, I was always afraid of the dog. They would get over there and go in the bootlegger's house, and there I was out in the street 